Hey AP Chemsters, this is Mrs. Vanda Wally bringing you another edition of the Blank Wall series. And today we're going to start off with chapter 17, which is all about electrochemistry. And electrochemistry is named because it has to do with electricity and, and chemistry. And the first thing you might think of is a battery. And are all batteries the same? And the answer is no. And what makes them different? Well, a lot of it has to do with their voltage. And so some of these batteries are 1.5 volts. We have 9 volt batteries. And what exactly do those volts really mean? And, and why do you need different voltages for, for different batteries? So we're going to talk about that. Another thing that we can talk about is something like this. I don't know if you can tell from the picture, but this is an electroplated, a silver plated dish or, or platter. And why would it be silver plated? Why isn't it entirely all silver? Well, it's probably because of the cost. The cost would make it way too, too expensive to make a platter like that or a dish. Um, and so what they do is they put a fine, fine coating of silver on it, and that's called silver plating. Uh, you might have some of these at home, or maybe your grandma does. I don't know. And another thing that we could talk about is, I know you can't really tell what that is, but that has been a galvanized pail. And, and what does galvanized even mean? Well, in industry, uh, they like to use iron and steel a lot uh, for, for structural issues and, and like light poles and things like that. But the problem is iron rusts. So if we can put a protective coating of zinc on it, then the iron underneath does not rust. And so it's protected. So a galvanized piece of metal, typically steel or iron, has been protected by putting on a coat of zinc. And that is called galvanized steel. And so that kind of brings us to our first section in chapter 17. And that is called galvanic cells that's kind of like from the galvanized steel. So we're talking about cells where there is a sacrificial metal, in that case it was the steel, um, used to plate out over the other metal, and that the other case was like the iron. So it is really the transferring of, of the metal to another and just plate it over. So how does that really work, and what does this have to do with batteries and, and silver plating? Well, let's kind of find out here. So here's a picture of uh, a galvanized cell, electrochemical cell. We're, we're really saying the same thing. And we went back in chapter four, I think we talked about oxidation reduction reactions. And so what we do is that we make these redox reactions work for us. And so we have uh, oxidation occurring at one cell and then reduction occurring at another cell. And what happens if you set it up just right, you can uh, harness this flow of electrons uh, maybe into a battery or something like that and um, then release it over here again. So then the electrons end up over on this side. And so if you remember, what does oxidation mean? Well, do you remember this? Here we go. Oxidation, loss of electrons. Leo goes GER. Do you remember that? Leo is your oxidation, loss of electrons. And we have a, a term for that. Where does that occur? It occurs at the anode. And what the heck is that picture over there? That is the picture of an ox. An ox. Get it? Get it? So what this is saying is that the subsidized is oxidized. Um, is going to be called the reducing agent and actually the AP people have taken out those terminologies So we don't need to worry about what a reducing agent is all you need to worry about is that oxidation is Leo loss of electrons uh, and an ox uh, Oxidation occurs at the anode now the next one is reduction and reduction gains electrons Grrr, reduction is gain of electrons and that occurs at the cathode. Now, now watch this. That would be my, get it, red cat. So what does that mean? Reduction occurs at the cathode. So those are my terminology. So let's kind of go back up here again. So up here, oxidation, this would be my anode. Oh, there it is. It's labeled. And reduction is at my 
cathode, and that's labeled here. And notice the electron flow. Why does it flow this way? Well, think about it. If you have a loss of electrons, that means electrons are leaving, and they go over this direction. And now the electrons were going to, in a sense, attach themselves on the cathode. And that is where then the uh, reduction can occur. That is how you can gain electrons because they go through the wire and, and stop off on, on that piece of metal and that's where reduction can occur. So let's see what else we have. So redox energy, well, for one thing, if you ever notice that uh, wiring can get hot and sometimes that's how house fires can occur. So heat is produced when you have this. Um, electricity can be produced if the reactants are separated, um, typically by either a salt bridge, is, is what we have, uh, this porous partition. And why do we need the salt bridge? We need to separate the two out uh, so we can harness the electricity. Uh, redox does occur in like the same beaker, but you can't get to the electricity, and that's the problem. Uh, you can still have things be oxidized and reduced, uh, but, but you can't get the electricity if they're in the same beaker. But if you have them separate, then you can harness the electricity, and you can use this like for a battery or, or to light up a light bulb or whatever you really want or whatever you need electricity for. So anyway, um, the electrons are going to travel through that wire. So the galvanic cell is a device in which chemical energy is changed into electrical energy. And once again, oxidation occurs at the anode and reduction occurs at the cathode. Now finally, we have the cell potential. The driving force is on the electrons. And this potential is measured in volts. And to give you a little background here, uh, here are two of the scientists, Luigi Galvani, he is an Italian dude, and he was the one that first discovered this idea of these flow of electrons. He actually made the first cell. If you do a little background reading on him, he actually used frog legs, believe it or not, uh, and then he discovered, wow, these frog legs will conduct electricity. Um, and, and finally, thank goodness, he found other ways to do it, so we aren't using frog legs today, but he was the first one to notice this flow of electrons electrons in a sense. And then here's the other guy, Alessandro Giuseppe Antonio Anastasio Volta. Uh, and I have a hard time remember Danny's name. Holy cow. Uh, but anyway, Volta was the one that actually came up with this idea of volts, which is this electron uh, potential difference. And we're talking about a difference. We're talking about subtracting, in a sense. Um, and it's a difference between what? Between the two metals. So depending on which metals you use, um, your differences are going to be different. And the very first battery was actually created by Volta. And he ended up using zinc and copper to make his first battery. And that's probably the most common pairings as well. So uh, we still recreate his first battery even today. So back to our notes again, one more time, this potential or potential difference is measured in volts, named after Volta. So let's go on with problem number one. The picture below is of electrochemical cell. Describe what is taking place. Well, a lot of the picture is already doing, you know, the describing for you. Um, so notice that at the anode, we have the zinc being oxidized. And what does that mean? It is losing electrons. So in other words, electrons is a product. So the, the zinc right here is going from being a metal state and into making zinc ions. So you are actually pitting or you're decreasing the amount of zinc metal as this reaction progresses. And so if the, the zinc metal is losing electrons, then where are those electrons going? They're going through the wire, through the voltmeter, and be depositing on this copper um, piece of metal there too. And so what happens there? You have a solution of copper ions, and those ions, notice they're positively charged, are being attracted to the negative charge on the uh, copper piece of metal. And so the copper ions will then gain electrons, become more solid metal. So copper is actually being deposited, additional copper is being deposited on that piece of metal. Now what's the purpose of a salt bridge? 
Now, as you may notice, you cannot harness uh, positive and, and negative charges. They always have to be equal. Well, what's going on in the zinc beaker here? You have zinc ions being created. You have more of a positive charge. But what about the nitrate? We're not doing anything with nitrate. So you're having a buildup of a positive charge, and you have an unequal amount of, of positive versus negative, and they have to be equal. Well, look over in the copper side over here. You are losing the positive charge because the copper ions is becoming neutralized and is uh, becoming that, that neutral copper metal, and now you're going to have a buildup of that nitrate ion. So what does the salt bridge allow? It allows for the nitrate to go from the one beaker into the other so that there's always an equal amount of charges. As you are gaining a positive charge in the zinc beaker, you're going to gain more uh, nitrates coming through the salt bridge. If you are losing positive charge in the copper beaker, then you're going to uh, force those nitrate ions out to always have the same amount of charge. So that is the purpose of salt bridge and notice that it connects your circuit so that if you take your salt bridge out, this will no longer flow because you can't have that unequal uh, charge again. So that is it for section 17.1. Uh, uh, um, stay tuned for the next one.